Lawrence Winehouse snipe, you know. So this is our uh, Kujuk Lake banding station. Yeah, this is a common snipe, and um, and you can tell it from a couple of things. First, the bill is more than twice the length of the head, and then you can see the trailing edge of secondaries. It's bright white, which uh, great snipe and little uh, jack snipe, which we have here lack, and then. The tail corners are uh, normal brown, so they are pretty brownish, whereas in great snipe these would be bright white, which you can see when you flush a great snipe. So these are very secretive uh, water birds, they like reeds, we find them uh, in our cages, around uh, our cages where the reeds are intact, and these birds are very common here, they are perhaps uh, one, they are one of the two most common birds we catch and ring, and, um, but they are very hard to see. You only see them when they flush, and when they flush, the common snipe uh, flushes with a loud kind of screeching kind of sound, which I can't imitate, obviously. <laughs> but um, So yeah, um, obviously I won't be able to call them, but in any case, um, they fly far, zigzagging, and they fly quite far. Great snipe, on the other hand, flushes quite close, two, three meters, and then doesn't make a sound, or usually, almost always does not make a sound, and then flies a bit, I don't know, 20, 30 meters max, and then plops down. Jack snipe, you almost have to step on the thing, and also uh, uh, flushes even uh, a shorter distance, and then it will go down. And usually jack snipe also likes drier ground, but you know, that's not a reliable way to um, ID them. But, Collectively, you can ID most snipe quite accurately. And so, and so the idea here, right, is that we don't know how many of these birds there are, and so we're trying to count them. So we put up nets, catch them in the nets, and then you put a, a band, a ring on their leg that has a unique identifier number. And if somebody's somewhere else, elsewhere in the, here or elsewhere in Turkey or elsewhere in the world catches this guy, it goes into an international registry and we can track and see this guy was this age, this size here at this year and how far did he migrate and that kind of stuff. So this is our, one of our bird banding stations. Yes, and uh, so it's called bird banding in US, bird ringing in Europe and rest of the world. <laughs> and um, this is, uh, this, the number here is DA04381 Otu Kad Ankara Turkey. So anyone who sees this and who knows what they are doing will contact the Turkish ringing coordinator in Ankara and she will let us know. And in Kars so far, we, had, uh, we caught birds that were ringed or banded in Israel and uh, the best South Africa, which is the farthest a bird um, caught in Turkey ever came from, a ringed bird. So that was 7,835 kilometers, a swallow that's only 18 grams. And it was ringed in 2006 and caught this spring, so at least it covered about uh, 48,000 kilometers uh, during its migration. And um, so, and we also caught a uh, willow warbler this big that came from Moscow, and birds we ringed were caught in Hungary, and one uh, thrush we caught was shot in Cyprus 12 days later, which shows you, actually was a good example, because Cyprus has a big bird hunting problem, and even, you know, that our ring bird could not escape there guns. And the rings get stuck in your teeth, that's another way, you know, the villagers catch them in their teeth, they know that it came from us. So. Exactly. I'm a Turkish bird, I hope he lets me go, I like to leave the country, I'm a Turkish bird imprisoned by this man, oh yeah, thank you, what am I going for?